His Excellency the President's speech to make a few remarks. Today we are gathered here and we are greatly honored to have His Excellency Uru Kenyatta, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces of the Republic of Kenya as our Chief Guest. I want to thank His Excellency the President for his continued leadership and commitment to providing world-class infrastructure as espoused in our country's development blueprint, Vision 2030, and the African Union Agenda 2063. I also thank the distinguished guests, engineers, and allied professionals here present today who are behind the delivery of this program that PS engineer Dr. Njoroge has just spoken about. Thank you very much, Institution of uh, Engineers of Kenya and the Engineers Board of Kenya for your kind invitation to us to attend and participate at this 28th International Conference of Engineers. May I apologize on behalf of our Cabinet Secretary, Mr. James Macharia EGH, who was, unable, who was not able to be present with us and asked me to represent him. I am aware that he is traveled out of the country. I personally feel honored and privileged to be part of this worthy event. Distinguished participants, to complement the taxpayers' contribution, a substantial part of our infrastructure is financed through multilateral and bilateral agreements between our country and other nations, as well as international development agencies. Through such partnerships, we are able to afford our people a better livelihood and opportunities for growth. Indeed, our aspiration as a nation is to provide a high quality of life for all our citizens. This inclusive growth is underpinned by the quality of our infrastructure and will lead to more local prospects and innovation. I thank His Excellency for becoming a powerful voice of Africa, a voice for Africa in speaking out and consistently promoting the interests of the African people. I want to mention a few of these instances where His Excellency has advocated for greater levels of international cooperation in the acknowledgement of one shared motherland and humanity. In the recent Africa-US meeting with the President Joe Biden of the United States, His Excellency spoke of our ability to address issues of climate through climate smart solutions and the use of renewable energy resources in which Kenya excels. At the UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, he called for more climate financing to help African nations mitigate the effects of climate change by asking other nations to invest in restoration of our carbon sinks. Funds invested in Africa for this purpose benefit the whole world. His Excellency's efforts at the Africa and the Caribbean community and common market Africa-Caribbean addressed climate challenges, depletion of our biodiversity through climate change, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the need for more and greater collaboration. As the UN Security Council Chair of the Month, His Excellency called for more appreciation of diversity as a way to support peace. His Excellency's leadership role in New York, in particular, specifically highlighted the existing inequalities which were sharply brought into focus by the COVID-19 pandemic. All these are critical issues facing humanity today, 
and I have been informed that they are all on the table for discussion at this important conference this week. The complementary role between nature and infrastructure is not to be ignored. Nature and the built environment must coexist so that powerful, the powerful force does not destroy the weaker one. Engineers, more than any other profession, are aware of what the ravages of nature can do and are able to harness this power for good and use it in the service of humanity. Nature also provides most materials used for our infrastructure and the nature-based solutions tend to be the most effective. I also want to mention about our continental efforts, particularly the African continental free trade area. Africa needs 2.5 million engineers to meet its sustainable development goals. The Federation of African Engineers Organizations, as recently as last month in Ghana, promised that African engineers will support the African continental free trade area, free trade area through delivering the infrastructure needed for cross-border trade to thrive in the continent. Indeed, this is one of the aspirations of the African Union Agenda 2063 of the Africa we want, which is behind the continental free trade area. The flagship programs of this bold plan for our continent, such as the establishment of a high-speed rail network across the continent and the Grand Inga Dam project will be done by engineers. We want this to be African engineers doing this work. In order to attain this structural transformation, we need to create more interest in STEM subjects and a larger enrollment in engineering courses, particularly by women. Perhaps what comes out clearly is the need for collaboration in, tack in tackling these issues and develop an ecosystem of partnerships for productivity, innovation, and efficiency. Engineers are called upon to provide solutions to, our, to all these issues, and this is why the engineering, fraternity, the engineering fraternity's focus this year is on the role of engineers in accelerating economic recovery after the pandemic. I find this theme to be pertinent, very relevant, and timely. Engineers have a special responsibility to change the built environment sustainably. The Ministry commits to provide the necessary support for the continued success of the engineering practice and is determined to put in place an enabling environment to facilitate engineering professionals to play their part in full. After these remarks, and of course, uh, Chairman, I listened carefully to what you said, and my business will be to serve as a, a conveyor belt. <laughs> After these remarks, it's now my singular honor and privilege to deliver the speech of uh, our chief guest, His Excellency, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense, Defense Forces of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta. And I will now, with your indulgence, indulgence proceed in court, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to join you, Albert, virtually for the opening of the 28th Institution of Engineers of Kenya International Conference. Such, a virtual, such virtual interactions are a reality of the times we are currently living in, made possible by solutions provided by you, the engineers. This year's conference themed Engineers Accelerating Sustainable Economic Recovery is indeed timely as it speaks to the urgency that we, as a nation, have in returning our country back to the development trajectory we were in before the COVID-19 pandemic. Distinguished delegates, 
From the outset, I would like to recognize the contributions made by the engineering profession to the socio-economic development of our nation. All our critical infrastructure, iconic roads and bridges, our telecommunications networks, dams, schools, hospitals, ports, energy projects, and so much more are the fruits of your skills, talents, and expertise. We cannot conceive a Kenya without engineers. We cannot conceive an Africa without engineers. Indeed, we wonder where Kenya would be without civil, electrical, mechanical, structural, software, hardware, and aeronautical engineers. Since the founding of our nation, you and the engineers have, in a significant way, inspired our economy, made our dreams tangible and provided the platform for the prosperity we enjoy today. Both the Kenya Vision 2030 and the Big Four Agenda are heavily dependent on your good works and your sterling efforts. You are driving the construction boom that is the, the affordable housing projects which are delivering decent low-cost homes to Kenyans. The construction industry contributed 6.9% to the gross domestic product in the third quarter of year 2020. The sector has been particularly resilient despite of the COVID-19 pandemic. The GDP from construction in Kenya is estimated to reach almost 160 billion uh, Kenya shillings in the year 2023. Turning to transport infrastructure, whether it's the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, upgrading and expansion, the expansion of the port of Mombasa through container terminals one and two, the Dongo Kundu Free Trade Port, the Lamu Port, the Standard Gauge Railway, and the construction and rehabilitation of 10,000 kilometers of conventional roads and the low volume seal roads. All these projects are on track to completion ahead of schedule and within budget because of your efforts. <laughs> of specific high priority value to our nation and particularly to the infrastructure sector is the 27 kilometer Nairobi Expressway. This road, which we expect to commission soon, will be the first pure toll road project in the country, using private financing through the public-private partnership model. The expressway incorporates 11 interchanges with a total of 27 toll stations, and is an iconic piece of engineering excellence that exemplifies the tremendous progress we are making as a nation. Ladies and gentlemen, at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic in the year 2020, I watched with concern as residents from Likoni struggled for limited space on the ferry to access Mombasa Island with increased risk of infection. My administration responded to the challenge by providing resources and facilitation to construct an alternative crossing over the Kony Channel in what would be the first floating bridge in East Africa. The 800 meter crossing facility that allows approximately 300,000 commuters to walk across the channel at peak hours was completed within six months at a competitive cost of 1.9 billion shillings and to high standards, again through the dedicated efforts of our engineers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is worth noting that since independence, the Standard Gauge Railway is the first single major iconic and transformative infrastructure in the railways sector undertaken by engineers in Kenya. The SGR infrastructure also includes expansion and modernization of the Nairobi Inland Container Depot 
and the construction of access roads connecting the Nairobi ICD to the Eastern Bypass Road, Southern Bypass Road, Nairobi Industrial Area, and Mombasa Road. This has increased ICD's capacity to 405,000 TEUs per year from a previous 180 TEUs uh, per year. Engineers take pride in the fact that you have not only delivered the SGR in record time and to world-class standards, but you have too ensured that it fully complies with our uh, conservation goals for biodiversity and env environmental protection. I note that the, op the operations along the SGR lines have been undertaken safely without any incidents, accidents, or and, uh, within schedule. As at August 2021, a total of 14,988,868 tons of freight and 5,872,843 passengers had been moved along the SGR lines. This surely is a feat for which as a nation and especially our engineers, we all should be proud. Beyond steel, bricks and mortar, our excellence in telecommunications and the fintech have been spurred by fiber optic connectivity, masts, power generation and distribution infrastructure, and innovative hardware and software systems that rival any, any found anywhere else. Our status as a mobile banking powerhouse, our impressive rates of mobile telephony penetration, and our continental leadership in terms of last mile e electricity connection, connectivity are all due in large part to the brilliance of your minds and the excellence of your hands. Ladies and gentlemen, while I am cognizant of what has been achieved so far, I cannot fail to mention that we have barely scratched the surface of what Kenya can achieve. As engineers, your profession has so much more room for growth. In Kenya, we are far below the recommended UNESCO ratio of one engineer for every 5,000 persons. To simplify our technological capacity and attain the quantity and the quality of infrastructure that will support our planned expansion of manufacturing, expand our agricultural production, and tap into new and emerging sectors of the economy, such as the blue economy, mining, and increased power production through the various options of nuclear, geothermal, wind, and hydropower, we need far more engineers across all fields. According to the Engineers Board of Kenya, there were 19,739 registered graduate engineers in Kenya, but only 2,000 204 of those were registered professional engineers. The ratio of registered graduate engineers to our population is 1 to 2,804, and 1 to 25,000 for registered professional engineers. Ladies and gentlemen, empirical evidence indicates a strong link between engineering and socio-economic development. Indeed, developed nations tend to have a higher share of That has been uh, CAS Chris Obure there, opening the 28th International Engineers Conference in Mombasa, uh, organized by the Institution of Engineers of Kenya and the Engineer Board of Kenya. They are reading the head of state speech who was supposed to officially open the international conference. But because of the interest of time, let me just point one thing is that uh, I'll be advocating for greater participation and professionalism. Of course, uh, engineers are playing a key role in actualizing one of the president's big four agenda. Uh, and of course uh, our Mombasa team will give us a more concrete information or detailed report in our subsequent bulletin.